Just CP girl? Yeah. And From CP girl's nest or just CP no. girl? Aubrey, I'll make a big no CP girl. Done. So, Amanda, I'm introducing you as CP, from CP girl, Amanda Fino, and new novelist. Yeah. Still, a published author. Yeah. Should I say published author? Yeah, Bob. Okay. Then you talk about your book because that's your expertise, right? And then, Tylia, I'm introducing you as Stomping on Cerebral Palsy, Tylia. Flores, is that right? Yes, and I'm also a published author too. Yeah! Another published author, excellent title. I'm just gonna, I have to write it down for myself, right? Flores. You Some, record there, right here. What's, what's, but it's, it was, what was that you just did, The Mighty? Yes. How, how do I say that? Who the has mighty, just. It's just called The Mighty. And I'm a community leader for the site. Excellent, that's it. Community leader for the mighty community leader. A recording is on. And published author. Cool, that works. Yeah. Ready? Ready. Okay, cool. Well, um, my name is Cindy Evans and I am part of a Triple, uh, Marie Watt, CP, Venosi, and um, Aaron. Now we are the real life of adults with cerebral palsy, and today we are celebrating Cerebral Palsy Day, and we're doing that by having a couple of really cool women on. CP gal Amanda Fino, who is a newly published author, and Kaya Flores, stomping on cerebral palsy, who's a community leader for a website called. The Mighty, and she is also a published author. Now, the real life of, of adults with cerebral palsy, me and Marie. I'll introduce myself, then Marie will introduce herself, and then the ladies will introduce themselves. So I'm Cindy Evans. I've done a couple of different degrees in sports science, mainly exercise science. And for the last 30 years, I've been training and conditioning adults with cerebral palsy. I'm on a mission because I want people with cerebral palsy to understand the physiological reactions associated with their cerebral palsy, uh, which is the exhaustion of the speed dependent response to movement. Because I think once you understand what's happening when you speed up and when you slow down, it's much easier to train and exercise yourself and exercise is such a great thing. Marie, I'd like to introduce Marie and she'll introduce herself, but we got together because we are both quite passionate about health and well-being, being away, positive outlook. So, we started this together to spread that word. So, Marie, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Marie Well CP. Well CP means work out with terrible palsy and... Like Sydney said, we got together because we love, we have the same interests in the adults with cerebral palsy, and we also have the same interests of working out when in the gym setting or in some kind of setting with cerebral palsy. So today we decided to take two other women from their from their groups and have a group chat about being positive with cerebral palsy and what we do to stay positive. Can I say something then too? I forgot. Um, now, one of the reasons that we we are really keen on talking to, to people like Amanda and Tylia is because um, traditionally with cerebral palsy, people, especially our adults, have been brought up in a medical system where everyone like who works with you kind of feels a bit sorry for you. Oh, we're trying to fix it 
they're going to try and make us de- make, make you like somebody which is unbelievable, you know. What we want people to see about our training, how do you stay positive about it, is to love your body, to love how it moves. So you know how it moves and you learn how it moves and then you can make it move how you, you know, the it can move. Yeah, so that's just what I wanted to say. Anyway, now I want to introduce Amanda Pitmo, who I first met on Facebook um, through through the uh, our website, who totally interested me because she was just about to publish her novel, and it isn't just one novel, is it? Amanda, over to you. Yeah. I am by novel. Ow. What? My name? That will be about me and my life will be a little bit girl. Wow. So we're going to put your website and your web link onto our web our real life of cerebral palsy so they can just go straight in and have a look at your books and does it go straight on to amazon as well yeah yes cool so amanda you actually chose the title of our web of our podcast today staying positive and grateful with cerebral palsy so tell us something you're grateful for i She used to hate her CP. Did anybody else have that? Me. Oh, I had that yeah. as a teenager. Hey, Amanda, my twenties. How, how did you change that, Amanda? Well, I move away for more and more from baby me to me. And I'm not me. You, I did say you. You need to. You more about your TV. And it's called me out to be worthy. I'm not a rat or you're in my room more over there with your mum. Eh? So, yeah. So, I would like you to do me a favour and uh, write that out as well. Because, you know, I understood a lot of it, Amanda, but as you get excited, of course, you must muscles get tighter and they have to really listen and I'm a bit deaf because I'm 56 years old and I used to dance right next to them. Oh girl you look good for 56. <laughs> I know so but can I just uh, summarize what I thought I saw or does anyone because uh, what you're saying is you used to hate this cerebral palsy and a Your story about why you hated 
your CP is all in your book? Yeah, it's in yeah. yeah right. Okay. Yeah. Um, 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 yeah, I did not. You were. Oh, I want that. That's what I want. I'll go get the summary and have a read. I have not read the book yet because. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Cool. Who have you got? So, that's what this is, is about making sure because people will buy your book and there's a lot of people who want to buy your book and listen to the story to find out what your yes. What were your strategies? Yeah. I could be bring up May I take a peek? We are more deeper. I feel go more better. I go, I will go with deep bigger. That's how you got into worked out CP girl. Okay. Fantastic. Because it's about telling your story. When people when you tell your story, then you share your strategies and then other people can actually go, oh wow, maybe I could use that strategy. And it's yeah. Talia, is it okay to introduce Talia? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Talia, so um Talia is our fourth person, and we were saying it's kind of hard when you've got four people to make sure everyone gets the voice, but we kind of come back to everybody. Um, and Talia Flores from Stomping on Cerebral Palsy, which I love that title. Um, she's a community leader for The Mighty, and The Mighty was actually the first place where I met Marie. So Awesome! Yeah, she read me first article they were for The Mighty in... She like then Facebook me. That's, That's it. cool. Talia, tell us about you. So my name's Talia Flores. I'm the author of James Ticking Time Bomb, and I have spastic cerebral palsy that affects my left side more so my right. Um, through my grief after the death of my best friend Daniel, who had CP and a brain tumor, unfortunately, um, I started to write. I self published the book at 16 and then after that I got into writing for the mighty and the cerebral palsy community all together and that's how stomping on CP came to be about. So tell me about stomping on CP because I love that title what is it what does it mean kind of? <laughs> it, just, it just means that we're just stomping on the obstacles that come our way and we never let anything stop us and I just it's thought really giant. <laughs> And I just thought it was a very cool, very cool name. And I wanted, because like my book is mainly about a young man with cancer. But as I'm getting older now and I'm maturing, I'm realizing that the CP community needs a voice. And I just, I just decided to do it when I was 18 years old. And that's how I got connected with Maria and, and, and Amanda. And... Uh, I've just been a writer ever since. Yeah. I, 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 my experience is uh, I've always worked, I've, throughout my university degrees, I worked with elite athletes and I trained all these Australian level uh, people and I ran it. Ran the <coughs> and then as an aside, I worked in um, a gym for children who had disabilities. And when I went traveling, I started working with cerebral palsy. Now, I was really lucky because in New Zealand I got to get people out of institutions and build houses for them. Yeah. My job was interpreting the physiotherapy and the OT stuff so we could do it at home and then I used to run exercise classes. And what I learned from that, when we started, you guys are not going to believe this because you are so young, there was no internet. I wrote my own computer program because that is how you had to do it. Like before the internet. 
I would die. Like, I need my Facebook. I need to communicate with you. Yeah, my baby, bro. Yeah. Amanda, you here of all of us would understand how amazing it is to be able to have a voice that people just listen to with straight up. It's very powerful. You know, finding out how it works. Thank you, people. Yes, thank you to Martin Stickerbird and everybody. Yeah, you gave my way. Let me put it to you this way if it wasn't for Facebook, I would feel like I'm facing my battle alone. And, and that is it. How oh, they felt like before social media because growing up in the 80s where neither Amanda or Talia were born in the 80s. Why are you making me feel so young? I have an yeah. old yeah, You are young. 63. I was born in 1963. <laughs> Dali Bridgetown on Australia Day, 1960. <laughs> oh, I um, I what was about born you? in the late seventies and raised 70s. in the eighties where no one understood CP, and I was the only person in my town with cerebral palsy, and it wasn't until the fourth grade when I. When I met a te my fourth grade teacher had been a high school teacher for maybe 10 years, but came down to the fourth grade to teach me because she had cerebral palsy herself. I remember you telling me about it. Why? So, Fourth grade to sixth grade, I had a teacher with cerebral palsy. That's um, cool. And so that me amazing. In my life growing up, going to school with regular, with normal, able bodied children, it was difficult to. Some respect because at school dances, my mom would have to come with me and stand on the wall just to make sure that I did a triple fall. I had a one on one aid where, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's pretty yeah. yeah. kind of makes where how do you get a friend when you've got this person always with you? Like, you look like you've already got one, exactly. And, and you just me a good okay, and both every by So by the time I was in my twenties, I didn't want to deal with my CP anymore because. I was known for my CP in my small town. So when they went to college, I kind of reinvented myself and took myself on the wrong path and didn't really acknowledge how hard it was to deal with life with CP. So it wasn't until my mid to late. There's 30s that I accepted my terrible palsy again. You know, oh, that, no. Get on with it. Just be, just, you know, just ignore it. Just do it. You, it's not true. No, you have to understand what's happening in your body to take yeah. care of your body. I, I agree with yeah. that. Sydney. If I could tell, tell you guys something a little bit about me is that I went to ucp and then i went to mainstream school and that, that was hard being the only kid in mainstream classes in a wheelchair but then when i got to middle school they put me in the ese program with all these different kids that had down syndrome adhd and i was like 
I saved from places like that. <laughs> and I, I had a good teacher out of it. Her name was Ms. Van Horn, and she me mentored me through the whole year. And I remember having trouble with science class because I had a mean science teacher. And I'm not going to say her name, but I was in the mainstream class for science class, and the, la the lady was really mean to me. She didn't know how to deal with children with disabilities. So what Ms. Van Horn did was she uh, took time out of her planning time to tutor me in, in science. And then I got, at the end of the year, I got an award for academic excellence in science. And to this day, me and Ms. Van Horn have always kept in touch. In fact, I got a No. You have no idea how many teachers in my school education career that I had to fight with to get them to accept me in their classroom. You two are lucky because you two were born after the ADA Act. I know you had, I know you had your struggles and school and would teach yeah, how much more when you're considered not allowed to be there always yeah. marie would have been uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I know your dad yeah your dad i kind of feel what oh. maria feels because I, when i got to high school that's when i feel like my local high school like they they wanted me to be in a category that i wasn't and the teachers would be mean like every day I would come home from school crying and mom had to yank me out of out of public school and homeschool me because it just got too much. The, Good on you. Oh, oh, girl. the worst was, So like Marie, she had to fight, but actually sometimes I think it's so much better to do what your mum did, take you out of that terrible environment and bring you up in a positive and wonderful space and look where you are. Marie, yeah. I, I mean, after my book was published, I went back to the same school and handed the teacher that, that followed me into the bathroom and told me I was never going to be anything and gave her a copy of my book. Marie, I day God. I can't believe people would do that. Sorry, Amanda. I want and I People would not even listen to your whole sentence. Is that no, mom. Your ma. Your ma. Don't be. Oh, I Do you do all me and I will all of you be no problem to go dear. That must make it hard to, so you're saying that she didn't accept you? Yeah. I remember that one night he called me Daddy and he went to You know what? That's where 
writing your books has given you this different way of expressing yourself so that actually people see you before they meet you and that's never going to happen to you again amanda and one oh, of the things yeah how do we change those negative habits we are the role models for change mm -hmm. don't talk about, we, we're not yeah don't talk about what not to do what the real life of adults with cerebral palsy wants to talk about is what can you do like my, and, oh, my so I've got a question for um for Talia and then Marie first uh Talia what's a strategy that you know once you found a voice like you know and you felt you know you decided to do the mighty you didn't stop there what did you do with your body tell tell us what um what did you do to make yourself love your body? I just said, you, I just looked at myself in the mirror one day and I said, you know what? I'm tired of, of hiding behind a mask. I'm tired of being ashamed of my cerebral palsy. I'm going to wear shorts even if people see my scars. So it took a lot in me to say that I wanted to share my story. But one day I just told myself that it, ever since then, it's just been great. And I love that you say you're tired of hiding behind a mask. Oh, you had to keep pretending that you didn't love yourself because you do. Right? Exactly. So what? And what I think this comes from is this um, attitude that so many people have that say, "Get over it, get on with it." Yeah. And I don't know, Sydney. But, I don't know if you're familiar with the term catfishing, like no. a catfish. Like when you go online and you pretend to be somebody you're not. I oh, was, yeah. I was yeah. one of those. When I was in my uh, young teenage years, I was a catfish. I would go. I would go on sites and I would pretend to be somebody different. But as I got older, I realized I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, me too. I hear too. I am my TV. Yeah. I want a guy to yawn me. I never tell Jay about my TV. And there are people out there that love you for your mind, Amanda, and the more you get out there and spread that beautiful word that you're spreading, the more you're likely to find your husband. So Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Right, yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. yeah, yeah. that all good. I, I just want to get let um Marie have a have a I'd speak because uh, we've only got 40 minutes and Marie hasn't said much, but I really, really, really want Marie to tell, tell uh, her story about how she learned to love her body and herself. Uh, well, if I didn't much my body, I was okay when my body, my body was my body. It was my mind and then I was, you know, I was, in my mind, I thought, oh, my God, you know, I see someone with CP like Amanda, who maybe talks a little bit different, and I didn't want to hang out with her because I thought I would catch more of a CP, more CP from her or Talia, like, I didn't want to be associated with the person in a wheelchair. And my discrimination became to the point where I didn't see myself as a person with cerebral palsy. And my story yeah, it's more, it wasn't about the wheelchair. It's more about not wanting to associate with the cerebral palsy because then you have to go, oh, I've got it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and my, because mm -hmm. I would associate with other people with disabilities because I was, I, would I, was, I was on the baseball team with 
people with totally different disabilities like Down syndrome and stuff. Yeah, with that intellectual component, when you know that there is no intellectual component with cerebral palsy, because yeah. it's the cerebellum, not yeah. the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is just a movement center. In you know, the way I come from, Marie, I got people out of hospitals, they were considered to be morons, right up until 1983 down here in New Zealand and, and wow, you're oh, amazing. We institutions and considered not to be intellectually able to take care of themselves. And it took a great big, it took this one, uh, one person who was a social scientist to go in and just advocate for the change. And there's this beautiful movie <laughs> called Annie's Coming Out. If you ever watch it, it's about the, the girl that changed that. Now that was my era. I was so lucky. I got to get people out, you know, out of the hospitals and all the nurses treated them like adults. But, Amen. Uh, when I was Amen. When I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis, I didn't want to deal with that. So I decided to deal with the cerebral palsy. So when I, I emailed the United Cerebral Palsy and they had a group for adults and I went in and I joined and found a lot of positive people with cerebral palsy and one of them I got really close to and showed me a side of cerebral palsy I never saw before and he the person led me to Facebook to where I found the groups of groups of pages on Facebook and I was going on there asking a ton of questions and people were just speaking fun to me and stuff on there so saying that I sh should know this by now I'm this age or how come I've never been in a relationship? Well, by two months in or something, I decided to start my own group with stuff that I wanted to talk about and everything went from there and learning and talking to people with civil pussy has made me come out more by learning from them than I have taught them. Even though they say I taught them a lot, they taught me more than I taught them. And that's not what we're going to talk about at the moment. What we're going to talk about is the fact that you didn't learn anything about your cerebral palsy as a child. And that's because nobody really knew anything about it. They didn't do any science on it until around the 1970s when they started doing dorsal rhizotomies, which is where they, which they can stop the signal going back up so kids can walk better. Um, so there wasn't a lot out there. So when, when I first started, you know, in the 1990s, early, late 80s and 1990s, I'd say, well, what is cerebral palsy? And they'd start talking about how they felt about themselves, like you, you sometimes, you know, or, but they couldn't tell me what's the physiological response happening in these muscles that's creating this uh, effect. Because there wasn't much study on it. And uh, one thing yeah. I read today yeah. is... Yeah, I agree on that. It, you know, because... How much, Tyler, you, you're one of the youngest here, so tell us, how, what did people tell you about cerebral palsy when you were growing up? How did they explain that to you? When I was growing up, people, like my mom explained it the best way she could. God made me special, but you're not different from everybody else. But doctors explained it to me in such a negative way. And so that, I had a to say yeah. it. Doctors just said, nothing's going to help you. You're going to be confined for the rest of your life. See, but what I want to know is... Oh, a... you need to be in a home. Just don't sit in a wheelchair and don't move and, don't, and forget you've got a body. No, because as exercise scientists, we want you to train your body. 
because you know there's so much joy in movement and when you actually get in there and move that body like dancing you know if you just danced every day you would have a different feeling about your body and that's one strategy that i think is a really good proactive and positive strategy who cares what you look like when you dance nobody exactly I like yeah doing the two step. yeah my anyway, elbow moves going to the two step so yeah marie likes weight training Amanda, what sort of physical stuff do you do to give yourself a... I like me a walk. Jim and what? Give me a Tai Chi Do you do Tai Chi? No, I eat the milk. Get a my ball. Well, whatever you guys do, you do it slowly as you can because you've got a speed, dependent, speed dependent resistance. The faster you move, the more your spasticity hits in, and the shorter your range. So when you're doing range stuff, that's why dancing's good. You know, Zen dancing, Tai Chi. Think about moving through the range. If you do that for 20 minutes a day, David Henning says that gives your whole brain an oil change and you push out positive hormones. Really? That's all you gotta try. Give yourself a 20 minute a day dance and see, am I writing more positively today? I'm, What's this? I'm you? gonna take your advice. Yeah, okay. me too. Scooby guys, we could go on forever and maybe we could do another.